of your planning so you might go back to planning then again execution so this cycle would repeat itself for uh, as long as it is required for the successful completion and then you would be closing your project or a phase and monitoring controlling is something that would keep on going right from the start till the very end of the project now let's look at one of the graphs over here this particular graph is talking about how does the process group interact in a phase or a project so on this side on the y-axis or on the left hand side you would find the level of interaction and this is the time on the x-axis now in the starting of the project the most um, interactive process group is initiation because that's um, that's the process group that you take up when the project start of course some of the planning also starts some of the monitoring controlling also starts at the same time and once the project moves on and you have done some little bit of planning you might start some of the execution like hiring certain people or bringing some people on the team so those kind of execution work can start early in the project but then um, the highest level of interaction still remains with the initiation now once you are moving ahead you can see that the planning in interaction increases to the maximum and at the same time monitoring controlling is also rising slowly and steadily once <clears throat> you are in the middle of the planning and by that time you would have also have started some execution so you can also see that execution has also uh, taken a start and it's also increasing over here now once you move on you can see that execution becomes most interacted process and planning would start coming down and at the same time monitoring controlling would remain there throughout you can see this line this line goes throughout till the very end of the project and then the execution closes uh, or execution finishes and that's when the you can see the closing here this is the closing this was not there up till here but then once you are doing execution you might have produced certain outputs or the deliverables of your project that can be delivered in um, alone or they don't need to be delivered at the end of the project so that's why you can see even closing has started um, interacting because certain outputs might be delivered to the customer as and when they have been produced but of course the major closing would come towards the end of the project which is here and then the project finishes so uh, what we are saying is that the level of interaction of different process groups would change as per the uh, project or as per the timing in the project but of course most of the time these process groups would be uh, visible or they would be at least three of them which is uh, planning execution and monitoring controlling would be available mostly throughout the project at least I can say 80% of the time you would see three of them in the project so what I need to manage project what I need to do to manage project effectively and systematically first of all we need to define and authorize our project or a phase and that's what we do under initiation after that we need to define and refine our objectives and make certain plans to uh, how to make the output or how to execute our project which is done under planning then you need to integrate people and other resources to carry out the project management plan which was prepared here in the planning which is done through execution then of course the monitoring and controlling of the progress on the project would help you to identify any issues any variances um, or any actions like corrective actions that you might need to take in order to bring back the project on track so that's done by the monitoring controlling and finally you need to get the acceptance a formal acceptance of the output of your project in order to successfully close the project which is done by the closing so what what should a project manager know the 10 knowledge areas as simple as that remember the 10 knowledge areas you had scope time cost quality HR communication risk procurement 
stakeholder but how many are they one two three four five six seven eight nine where is the tenth knowledge area this is the tenth knowledge area integration yes so <clears throat> who does the integration that is what the major role of the project manager is to act as a project integrator or to um, basically carry out this integration management because at times you would find that project manager is uh, doing scope management or is doing time management but on certain big projects there might be specialized people who are working on all these different knowledge areas or there are different SMEs or different teams who are taking care of different different knowledge areas and project manager is just acting as an integrator which is uh, quite of, uh, of a role in itself to integrate all these nine knowledge areas and combine them together to produce an output from the project. So that is the major uh, role of the project manager to do the integration management and of course the rest of the nine knowledge areas always he should be aware of. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the uh, matrix, this is the process group matrix, uh, this is the knowledge area matrix or however you want to say. Um, I'll tell you how to read it. So on the top you see the um, columns, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, controlling and closing. And on the left hand side you see the um, knowledge areas because it's a very, um, I can say, um, uh, there is there are lots of things on this slide so if you're um, watching this or if you're looking at this on a smaller screen just on the top uh, in the in the columns you have the process groups and on the rows you have the uh, knowledge areas now you can see that there are processes written everywhere so you have developed project charter here you have developed project management plan, then on the next, then direct and manage the project work, then monitor, control the project work and perform integrated change control and then closing the project or a phase. Now these are all processes. Like this, there are processes everywhere on this matrix. Now, what does it mean? That developed project charter is a process which belongs to integration management knowledge area and is part of the initiation process group. Now if I ask you that how many processes are there in the initiation process group, you just need to look in the first column here and you would find that okay there are just two processes in the initiation that are developing the project charter and identifying the stakeholders. Now similarly in planning you have got processes from all the knowledge areas. You can see that not even a single knowledge area row is empty when it comes to planning. So every knowledge area is contributing in planning process group. Similarly in execution again we have quite a few process group processes then in monitoring controlling and then in closing. So we would be looking at this matrix card before we start any process and we would see that okay this is where we are or this is the process we are looking at and it would keep on reminding you okay that this process comes from which knowledge area and belongs to which process group so in total there are 47 processes 2 belongs to initiation 24 belongs to planning 8 belongs to execution 11 to monitoring controlling and 2 to closings this is just the distribution okay now um, Let's understand what, what is project information. So throughout the project life cycle, there would be a significant amount of data and information which would be collected, analyzed, transformed and distributed in various formats to different team members and any other stakeholder. Now project data are collected as a result of execution process and are shared with the project team. This data is analyzed in context and aggregated and transformed to, transform to become project information during various controlling processes and this information may be communicated verbally or stored and distributed as various reports. So understand the difference that we are trying to tell over here that there is a difference between data and information. Now data could be 
just any numbers or could be any anything like uh, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's, that's just data. But this data would not be of any use until unless you don't uh, put some context into it or you don't uh, do some analysis, you don't um, uh, make certain uh, decisions out of that data. So until unless you don't do that, it is of no use. And this data changes into information after you place the context and you uh, do some analysis, which is basically done in controlling and monitoring and controlling process group. So when the project team is executing the project, that's when the data is generated and during monitoring and controlling, this data is taken and converted into information, which is then passed on to different stakeholders and team members to understand how the project is progressing. Okay, so this is a proper flow diagram showing you how the data changes into information and then to reports. So we'll start from the very top, which is here, project execution. So once we are executing the project, the output would be work performance data. So we call it as work performance data, which would be used as an input by controlling processes and the output given by the controlling processes would be work performance information. Now this work performance information would help you to gain an overall project control which ultimately would be in support of preparing some reports because this information would then be further filtered or further um, um, you can say um, classified or grouped in different different ways as per the different needs of the stakeholders which would then form the reports. Now these reports would help you to manage your project management plan in a better way, make any changes in the project and of course do the communication to the stakeholders and the team members. So if you look at this chain at, at this point of time, I hope you would understand that this one, the one that I have circled or whatever it is. So execution gives data, controlling gives information, then that information is converted into reports. Those reports are taken up by the project communications and these are communicated to the team members and stakeholders. Let's say uh, I say 5 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, 3 hours on certain certain activities. Now this is called as data which is generally produced by individual team members when they say that boss we have done this much of work on this task, we have done this much of the work on this task. So when they give you this um, data, basically this input, this is called as data. Now when you are controlling, you are trying to analyze this data and you are trying to understand that okay, how much uh, are we ahead of schedule, are we behind schedule, are we running on schedule or uh, what is the uh, utilization of the resources or what is the remaining availability of the resources or how much resource consumption we have already done. So when you use that in input given from the execution to make sense out of that data, then that would become information. Now based on that information that are we ahead of schedule, behind of schedule or, or, or whatever the information you're talking about, you would then uh, probably classify it into different different reports like maybe your senior manager he doesn't want to know about the schedule performance or he doesn't know want to know about the uh, <clears throat> resource utilization he just wants to know that what is the cost that you have um, used so far and how much it is remaining and are you ahead or behind so you would uh, segregate all other information and you just keep that particular information and present it in a, a format as per the stakeholder and send a report to that particular stakeholder. So that's how the info then gets converted into a report. So generally when you send send out reports, you give them only a, a high level view of all what's happening. But of course there is a raw information, raw data behind that, which is nothing but the data or the information that you have been using to create that report. Right, now I'll just come back quickly to these two boxes which I left. 
Now, what it means is that work performance reports, when you see work performance reports, you would uh, probably uh, analyze and see that maybe there is some change required in the project which would be taken up by the project change control and there would be a change request that would be raised and it would be changed or that particular thing would be changed in the project management plan which would again go for execution. So any updates in the project management plan would of course need to be communicated back to the execution team that these are the changes that we have made and you need to now execute as per the new plan that we have created. So again this change in the project management plan would generally be because of the work performance reports or the work performance information that you have looked at and looking on and then you decide that okay something is not going right or there is a better way of doing something then you might want to change that so that's what these two arrows are denoting here. In this I would say that uh, project information workflow is actually starting in the execution because of the fact that that's when you start really working on the project. So in the initiation and in the planning, you are just uh, planning out things. Of course, you would send out a uh, certain uh, project management plan or um, a certain reports or certain, not reports, but then piece of information to the people and the stakeholders. But that's not uh, the real information that we are working on or that's not what exactly people uh, would be more interested in. So always the people would be interested in to see how the project is progressing. So that's why it starts with the execution. Otherwise in the planning and um, initiation also, you do send out communications, you do send out uh, people with the information, but that's just about the planning. So that's why we don't, uh, we don't uh, include it here in the workflow of information. So when you talk about data that is related to what's actually happening in the project. So what you have planned for the project would not be data as such uh, but what is happening in the project is categorized as data which will only happen during execution.